now I am going to cast aspersions on one of the major challenges that is affecting women or modern day women. This is a condition which is called endometriosis. So with the advent of modern day healthcare systems like the introduction of cesarean sections, laparoscopic procedures, women have also been disadvantaged by having other complications that are associated with these types of procedures. The major challenge or challenges that we have post-operation, they can be endometriosis, they can be adhesions, they can be infection. So these are just some of the examples of the complications that women can have to grapple with post-operation. So what is endometriosis? In this particular tutorial, I am going to discuss on endometriosis and I am also going to name some of the types or the subtypes of endometriosis. So when you're talking about endometriosis, we are deriving the name from the endometrium. So we are saying when there is ectopic endometrial tissue that is found at an ectopic site, that is what is now called endometriosis. So nowadays, because of the, the, the dominance or the prevalence of cesarean sections and laparoscopic procedures, uh, the cases or the chances of endometriosis, they are on the rise. However, endometriosis is not solely caused by operations. It can also happen due to unknown causes. It can also occur spontaneously. So, when endometrial tissue invades the myometrium or enters the myometrium, it is called adenomyosis. The major demerits of endometriosis is that at that ectopic site, the endometrial tissue continues to undergo the menstrual cyclic changes. So the, the endometrial tissue can actually swell or the secretory phase of a menstruation. So when it swells, it can actually be associated with pain or it can cause pain to the woman or to the victim. So when we have blood that can actually move in what we call retrograde menses and is going back instead of blood moving uh, to the uterus via the vagina, it can actually go back what we call retrograde flow of menses. So that blood then can then collect in the ovaries and give or confer this type of lesion that we call an endometrioma. So endometriomas or endometriosis is not only a condition that is found in the myometrium and the ovaries. It can also be found in the peritoneal space or it can actually attach to the bowels. So when we have this type of a condition, what then are we looking at sonographically? So the major appearance that we have in terms of an endometrioma is what is called the ground glass appearance or the chocolate cyst parts. When you're talking about something that is chocolate, we mean it is something that is so homogeneous. We don't get the name chocolate cyst from the sonographic findings. This is a name that is derived post operation. So when you actually have a glance of how the endometrioma looks like, you will see that it appears like a chocolate. So that's where the name 
chocolate seed actually came from. So this we are seeing here is typifying what we call an endometrioma. So doing it this way again, you can actually appreciate what we have here is an irregular lesion and we do have got urine which is here is actually filling in the bladder then this is the capsule or the outline of our lesion how did we get here how did we scan to get this type of images this i am going to talk about just now so basically when you are doing ultrasound scan of the pubic region there are two modalities or two routes that you can use to come up with your answer so basically according to myself i can say i am blessed to have both a trans abdominal and a trans vaginal probo transducer so which way or which one should i use when i'm doing a pelvic scan normally i use the geodesic when we have um, conditions that are not so serious or the geodesic is just the shortest distance to get where i'm going so when there's a queue of patients i normally prefer to use my trans uh my my, my uh, trans abdominal prop because it's fast it's quick however it is what its own demerits because it can miss a lot of pelvic pathologies because of overlying bowel gas it can actually obscure the conditions like our endometrioma adhesions to name but just a few so this is our cavilinear probe which is basically the the the, the standard uh, probe that we use uh with minimum or limited ethical issues or problems so what we basically need is we need our full bladder then we scan using our cavilinear probe then we can actually come up with our diagnosis however the cavilinear probe has got a disadvantage that it is a low frequency transducer yes it can penetrate to depth but it is it is a low resolution probe and we can actually mis mistake or misdiagnose some of or most of the pelvic pathologies so this is the probe that i use on patient or client number two but i went also to use the trans vaginal probe so you can actually see this is my nice machine uh, that I use for scanning and you can see this is uh, the probe and I'm holding the probe I'm so much blessed to be part of this sonography team it's an exciting profession I can tell you so here is the the major culprit that we can also use so this is what we call the trans uh, vaginal probe this animal is one of the most complicated things to use on earth why do i say so it is because of the ethical dilemmas associated with using this type of a probe because of different religious beliefs because of different misconception this type of a trans vaginal scan is perceived by most as an intimate examination and it can come with its own demerits so when you're using this type of a probe you must be very careful that uh, the the client has got a chaperone side so that in the future you might not be litigated you know women being women anything can be said after the examination especially if they are negative results so the trans um vagina probe has got its own disadvantages this type of a probe is contraindicated in virgins. We don't need to break someone's virginity using our own probe. So we must have that information at our fingertips before we try to insert this type of a probe. At the same time, when you've got vaginal masses or sores, 
uh, it can also be very difficult for you to insert this because you can actually inflict more pain to the patient. Overall or above all, we also need to know that um, uh, the vagina is a place that is a potential space for entry of infection into the patient. So we must be very careful so that we do this type of a procedure under an antiseptic conditions. Aseptic conditions. So what do we supposed to do? In as much as we know that the vagina is with vaginal commensals that tries to fight infection, but we don't need to introduce infection willy-nilly, plus we don't use this probe on a single patient, we use it on different patients, so we have to cover or protect our transducer to minimize or reduce cross-infection. So how do we do so? Or how did I do it? Okay, the first thing that you're supposed to do, uh, this is the footprint of my uh, transvaginal uh, transducer. You apply a little bit of gel as you see what I did here. I have applied a little bit of gel before I can put a protective sheet or a condom here to cover my transducer. So secondly, the second that you're supposed to do is to put a sheet or a condom around the, around the transducer as you are seeing here. I try to put, do that to put a condom a sheet here to protect um, my transducer and then when that, that is done I had to apply gel here and I'm liking the gel as you can see it looks like a fish this is looking like a brim and then this is like looking like the eye of a brim fish I don't know how it happened magically so here is my lubrication gel this is my gel here that we have here it can actually function both for lubrication at the same time it can also be used as an interface to reduce loss of uh, image resolution by any other uh, tissues that can be in between a fluid or some other things so this is actually um, the gel that I used there so you can see that nicely uh, my transducer is now covered and ready for action. So uh, when this is done, it means we are now ready to proceed with our uh, transvaginal scan. The, the, this is the best uh, type of scan that you can do to produce best or better images besides what i have spoken about uh the, the the legal issues the ethical issues are associated with using this type of a procedure so the major challenge then comes uh, when a patient is objecting and you know the best type of transducer to use what then do you do you must uh, consider patient values first evidence based practice so we need to consider uh, the preferences of the patient beyond and above our own preferences practitioners i hope you are following i hope we are listening then we are going to discuss on two separate cases that i came across in our radiology department uh, then I used uh, these two techniques to come up with a diagnosis which I comprehensively concluded that uh, there were two separate endometriomas presenting in different women. I don't know if this is magic or is coincidence. Of all the endometriomas that I have scanned and seen, they normally present uh, on the right side. So I think because of the orientation of the of the uterus, it seems as if retrograde blood uh, can actually flow via the fallopian tube uh, on the right more than what it does on the left. Hence, I see I've seen most of my endometriomas presenting on the right. Tutorial: We do have with two case studies from two different patients who all had these endometriomas or the chocolate cyst. At our radiology departments, 
it seems that endometriomas are a common finding. What are the sonography features or the clinical sonography features of endometriomas? Endometrioma on sonography shows hypoechoic mass calling diffuse low-level internal echoes the so-called chocolate cyst. They are not called chocolate cyst based on ultrasonographic determination and detection, but they appear like chocolate after operation. So after operation, because it's blood, so it appears like chocolate. So that's where the name comes from or where the name is derived from. But basically what we see sonographically is this appearance, the ground glass appearance that we are seeing low level internal echoes and you can actually see that they are homogeneous there is no posterior and uh, there is no posterior shadow here you can actually see that the other lesion is very much irregular so it's not only this ground glass type of appearance that we come across when you are scanning endometriomas there are other appearances which have been described as well including an aquatic cyst, solid appearing mass, solid elements in a cyst with the low levels. So if we play this, we can actually see that this type of lesion is actually very regular. What we have here is a little bit of uh, some blood. So as we were doing the scan, the blood was also slowly filling. So you can see that uh, using our end of vaginal probe, you can actually see the resolution of our endometrioma is actually very good and it can actually well define the endometrioma. So choosing between the two transabdominal and transvaginal scan, the best option or the best option for pelvic examination is our trans vaginal scan because it is proximal to the regions of the organs of interest and also we're using a high resolution transducer or high frequency transducer and then you can see that the resolution is actually better at the same time we also have to forego bowel gas that can actually obscure um, the endometrioma so that it won't be clear, clear on ultrasound scan so you see here this is a nice the nice lesion the nice lesion that we have here which is our endometrioma so you can also appreciate uh, from a different video you can actually see here it's going all the way so you can actually see that um, with the distance from the transducer uh, because we're using high frequency uh, probe, so the resolution it fares with depth. So the major disadvantage of a high resolution or a high frequency uh, transducer is that uh, with the depth, uh, the attenuation tends to be to increase. So frequency is directly proportional to the depth. So the higher the depth, the more the attenuation and the poorer the image becomes so you can see from the ear you can actually see that it's almost homogeneous but it's sort of artificially using losing its homogeneity here due to attenuation but the lesion is actually well outlined and it is of uniform echogenicity and echo texture so this is something that you also have to take note of the further that you go away from a high frequency transducer, uh, the more detail you're also going to lose. But when you are examining organs just adjacent to the transducer, it will have high resolution. You can actually see the capsule or the outline of our endometrioma here nicely demarcated here. The region or surrounding the endometrioma, there is nothing that you're seeing. So if you use a, a, a different grayscale, still we are appreciating the same thing. 
this is our lesion and the lesion is actually consistent with our ground glass appearance of any endometrioma the history of this patient uh, she delivered uh, some four months back uh, via c-section and this is actually one of the complications of a cesarean section or of a laparoscopic procedure in which we case we can have this retrograde flow of blood and it can actually occupy the ovaries and then present as an endometrioma as you are seeing so the collection of blood here is what is called an endometrioma uh, we can also have good blood that can collect in the uh, uterine cavity the, that we call hematometra but when blood collects in the uterine cavity at the same time also in the cervical or the endocervix we then call it hematometra carpals so those are just different names depending on the compartments or the collection of the blood that we have so in, in a nutshell this is an endometrioma our case number one and then we had another case as well that I'm going to briefly talk about or discuss about. So these endometriomas, they are part of what we call endometriosis. Endometrial tissue at an ectopic site is what we then refer to as our endometrioma. So this is a retrograde flow and it's part of endometriosis. So endometriosis present in different places differently. You can present uh, in the myometrium, in which case it is called adenomyosis. Endometriosis can also be found attached to the uh, bowels or in the peritoneal space. So if you use a, a, a different grayscale, still we are appreciating the same thing. This is our lesion, and the lesion is actually consistent with our ground glass appearance of any endometrioma the history of this patient uh, she delivered uh, some four months back uh, via c-section and this is actually one of the complications of a cesarean section or of a laparoscopic procedure in which we case we can have this retrograde flow of blood and it can actually occupy the ovaries and then present as an endometrioma as you are seeing so the collection of blood here is what is called an endometrioma uh, we can also have good blood that can collect in the uh, uterine cavity the, that we call hematometra but when blood collects in the uterine cavity at the same time also in the cervical or the endocervix we then call it hematometra carpals so those are just different names depending on the compartments or the collection of the blood that we have so in, in a nutshell this is an endometrioma our case number one and then we had another case as well that i'm going to briefly talk about or discuss about so these endometriomas they are part of what we call endometriosis endometrial tissue at an ectopic site is what we then refer to as our endometrioma so this is a retrograde flow and it's part of endometriosis so endometriosis present in different places differently you can present uh, in the myometrium in which case it is called adenomyosis endometriosis can also be found attached to the uh, bowels or in the peritoneal space so this one what you are seeing here is endometrial ectopic tissue that we have in our ovary and we call that endometrioma so i'm going to discuss on the second case with an endometrioma as well so now uh this is my second case presentation uh this case was a bit queer in the 
context in which it happened. Uh, the patient delivered uh, some seven months ago and she was sutured. Then she was normal. Then she had a altercation with the landlord over her house and then she was assaulted by the by the landlord so when she was assaulted she came with a ten foot chest uh, and the pelvic region was also painful so we did the ultrasound scan and then these are the shocking findings but personally I could not attribute what I saw to the assault that occurred. I am made to believe or was made to believe uh, that what I saw was something that happened before. So in this context, I used a trans abdominal uh, transducer to do the pelvic scan and this is what I saw. You can actually see here is our regular lesion and then you can actually see here there is a nice posterior enhancement. So as I highlighted the major advantage of using a trans abdominal ultrasound transducer is it doesn't suffer much attenuation with a low frequency transducer so it can penetrate a greater depth so you can actually see the posterior aspect uh, of our lesion with enhancement without much attenuation that has happened over this type of a depth so this is the lesion we can actually see that it's also very much homogeneous and is also on the right at next side we are not seeing a distinction between this lesion and our right ovary. We are also not seeing the crescent sign to say this lesion, to suggest that this lesion was actually para ovary in nature. So to that effect, I concluded that this was ovarian in nature and you can see nicely here the enhancement. So at first, I tried to figure out what it could have been and the uterus was very much clean and very nice and you can actually see this uh, regular lesion that is homogeneous with a typical ground glass appearance so you can actually see i couldn't believe that this was due to recent assault and there was no pv bleeding at the same time there was no collection in the uterus that i noted Adjacent to our lesion here, what you're seeing here protruding is our urinary bladder on transabdominal scar. So you can actually appreciate it. So this is our our lesion uh, on trans uh, abdominal ultrasound scan. So from the sonographic appearance of this, I was already uh, starting to have a uh, a, a suspicion that this could be a mirage of an endometrioma or a chocolate cyst. This was trans uh, vaginal, uh, trans abdominal ultrasound scan. Sorry, I would need you to then appreciate the difference uh, between what we are seeing here and what I then saw using my trans vaginal transducer on the same lesion so this was my second uh endometrioma or the second case so here using a different gray scale so this is what you can appreciate that this is a very much a regular mass uh, a very regular with the same ground glass appearance however there's something that is illusional here in between that was looking like uh, the endometrial uh, stripe uh what you're seeing here so it was actually then confusing me but you can actually see that this uh, lesion is very much regular and it was separate from the um from the uterus 
so you can see this so the same lesion again you can see it here well outlined and uh, it's very much homogeneous like that and from this end or from this angle you are not we are no longer seeing that thing that I, I saw that was resembling the endometrial stripe so indeed this was not the uterus it was a, a lesion with a ground glass appearance for I started to make the conclusion that this is a chocolate or an endometrioma and then I needed a verification so having seen this uh, you can actually see that we see here our posterior enhancement so this is the other merit uh, of my trans uh, abdominal ultrasound scan it doesn't suffer much uh, attenuation with the depth so it can actually uh, be used to image um, structures at depth or deeper structures so you can actually see from here to here uh, we haven't lost any significant um, resolution of our uh, image it's all actually looking more homogeneous unlike uh, our trans vaginal scan of course yes adjacent to the transducer we see nice and very uh, clear resolution but as we go away the go as we go further from the transducer we begin to lose um, resolution at a very faster rate okay so this is the area that i did uh, using my trans abdominal ultrasound scan following i'm going to demonstrate to you how i did the same examination now using a trans vaginal transducer so now here is our case number two on trans vaginal ultrasound scan i need you to appreciate that now we can actually see that uh, our endometrioma or our lesion is now appearing more big at the same time the resolution here is actually improved uh, and you can actually see this uh, outline here is now well outlined but i need you to appreciate one thing that is drastically changed here is we are moving away from the transducer going down here you can see that we are losing the resolution of the image with the depth why because we are now using a trans vaginal probe which is a high frequency probe and the higher the frequency that we have the more the attenuation with the depth so uh the demerits of using a trans vaginal scan uh it can actually not uh, detect structures fade away from the transducer because of its significant loss of resolution with depth so here at the posterior aspect of the lesion or the endometrioma you cannot appreciate the posterior enhancement that we are seeing using our trans abdominal transducer so the the, the image is actually zoomed or is appearing large enough and you can actually appreciate the endometrioma the resolution here adjacent or closer to the transducer is actually very nice and you can actually see the ground glass appearance at the same time we cannot see the illusional uh, structure that was appear appearing like the trans like the endometrial stripe on trans uh, abdominal scan that we saw so it has disappeared and you can actually see that this is a homogeneous uh, structure with a ground glass appearance consisting with a chocolate cyst uh, without the uh, artificial uh, endometrial stripe appearing like structure so this is the advantage of using a trans vaginal scan or transducer it can actually improve the resolution adjacent to the transducer but it suffers attenuation as we go further away from the from the transducer so using a different grayscale I am liking this, what we are seeing here, we can actually see that this is our lesion here and it's more homogeneous, uh, it's 
having the ground glass appearance that I was talking about and this is typifying a endometrioma so it's typifying an endometrioma uh, we cannot also see the distinction between it and uh, our our right ovary meaning to say this was ovarian in nature look at it very nice ground glass and a homogeneous lesion so this is a transvaginal for us however look at the posterior aspect of the posterior wall we have lost a definition or we have lost uh, the enhancement that we saw on transabdominal scan meaning to say that uh, we have suffered more attenuation as we go further away from the from the transducer so this is actually a very nice lesion as you can see which presented uh, as our second case I couldn't believe that this happened due to uh, the to the assault that took place I believe uh, that uh, this was actually a, a condition that the patient had had for quite some time prior to her being assaulted so it was in, in his gender finding but she, however she wanted to use this one as a legal basis to say that she was bleeding because of assault which I vehemently disagree with uh, endometrioma so comparing the two uh, you can actually see that um, both gave information that is also handy and very useful our trans abdominal ultrasound scan it actually highlighted to us that the lesion is called posterior enhancement and our trans abdominal our transvaginal transducer then gave us the nice outline at the same time it actually showed us that this is a homogeneous structure which is not adjacent but part of the right ovary so this was right ovarian in nature as i said before most of those endometriomas that i come across uh, i find them in the right uh, ovary with exceptions uh, where i can see them both on the right and the left side i thank you all for your time